you know, stress is what affects our bodies um, and our gut. And so something that moms can do and kids can do even at their school desk, which doesn't, um, wouldn't be too distracting, right? It's just, you just put your hand up to your neck. You kind of shape your finger like this and you rub down on your vagus nerve. And where, is the calm you where, down. where is the vagus nerve? Here? We're just going to rub on our neck. Okay. So like I said, it comes from your brainstem and wraps around. We're just gonna rub on our neck just a few times. Um, you can even, you know, you could even do it at your office if you it are feels a relaxing. mom. Yeah, it, it does. does. It calms you down and, and it's gonna get you out of that, you know, fight or flight or freeze kind of stress response. If you're having a tough time, you know, you don't have to react, you can just get Welcome to Functional Medicine Coaching Moms Podcast, where simplifying healthy lifestyle change for moms is the only goal. Hi, everyone. We are so excited to have Kim Del Castillo, I hope I pronounced that right, board certified holistic health practitioner, and more importantly, a mother of three. If you've ever struggled with gut issues like bloating, constipation, or diarrhea, this episode is for you. And this might surprise you, but this episode is also for you if you've suffered from any of the following vague symptoms like headaches, brain fog, joint pain, skin rashes, and fatigue, because often these issues resolve when you improve your gut health. Kim's journey into holistic health began 15 years ago when she was stuck at home with her debilitating gastrointestinal issues. She was diagnosed with celiac disease and noticed her other health conditions like menstrual cramps, psoriasis, and arthritis disappeared when she began to heal through holistic means. This is what inspired Kim to become a holistic practitioner. Her goal is to provide clients with natural solutions to things that seem to plague the modern man and woman. Kim believes these issues are not because you are getting quote unquote old, but rather because of metabolic chaos that needs to be unraveled. And I have to mention that Kim and I go way back. We um, were friends in high school and we reconnected recently through Facebook. And we both had similar stories with our kids being affected by food allergies. And I also suffer from gut issues myself. In her practice, Kim offers direct to client lab work and has helped countless individuals with unknown food sensitivities to find relief and live a healthier and more balanced life. Kim will have a special offer for our listeners. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So Kim, a lot of people are surprised when they hear that symptoms like fatigue or skin rashes and arthritis could be related to their gut health. Could you share a little bit about how that could be? Sure, absolutely. Um, So it's, it's, we kind of say if you have gut issues, you're one of the lucky ones, right? Because you feel it right away, you know what food bothered you. But when you have vague symptoms like your joints are achy or your hormones go wacky and you don't know why, or you have brain fog, um, headaches, things like that. You, it's harder to correlate what the food is that triggered that. Right. So, um, our guts and our blood, so our, our, my, our, our, our guts are very closely, um, (laughs) they're, they're right next to our bloodstream. Right. So, um, we have cells that kind of are, they're supposed to be kind of close together. It's called the tight junctions and things move in and out that are supposed to move out. But when you get intestinal permeability and I've never worked with a client that hasn't had that, um, the cells kind of loosen up and then things that are supposed to stay in your gut, get into your bloodstream and they trigger inflammation. So that could be inflammation of any kind. Um, and even, you know, if you, If you realize that you're losing muscle tone because your testosterone's dropping, that could be related to your gut. Any kind of thing that's going on in your body, because that that wall has been broken, it's not working the way it needs to be. Anything that is inflammatory could be caused by, you know, your gut. Wow. Yeah. So like, so what's making our guts so compromised? Why do we have this problem? 
Yeah. Um, well, pesticides, toxins, or cleaning products. Um, mm. Could be your skincare. Could be candles that you're burning that aren't um, phthalate free and paraben free and, you know, have fragrances. So we, um, and I will say, I know I live in the United States of America. It is very toxic where we live. Um, you know, our children are going to schools that are known for having mold in them. Um, there's, there's just so many things that are wreaking havoc on our, on our bodies, you know? Mm -hmm. Got it. Wow. So is that what they refer to when you, when you always hear this term, uh, leaky gut, it's that, that process that you were talking about? Yes. Yeah. It's, and people are like, Ooh, I don't want leaky gut. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's intestinal permeability, you know, okay. but yeah, we call it leaky gut. Right. Right. So that's great because for me, like I really, I I'm like that listener right now, or maybe there are listeners that know more about this, but I definitely am like, you know, uh, don't really never really like, that was such a great explanation how you described that and how it, uh, you know, goes into the gets it's supposed to be inside and it and it kind of i guess leaks out into and that's how we get these uh these symptoms and is you know is the process um like how would i know like that my joint pains or you know like i'm having joint pains how would i know that that's connected to leaky gut Right. Well, that that's something that I test for um, okay. because I kind of like to test and not guess, right? But there are a lot of autoimmune triggers in our gut, bacteria. Um, most of them have a rheumatoid arthritis marker on them, you know? So if that's elevated, that's telling me that you at least are susceptible to having autoimmune conditions, which also have everything to do with intestinal permeability or leaky gut. Wow. Wow. So you're saying pretty much every autoimmune disease would be related to a leaky gut? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because your body's not trying to attack, you know, your thyroid, say, right? But it's attacking things that shouldn't be in that area, right? Mm -hmm. um, your body's not trying to kill itself. It's just trying to deal with the things that, that are out of place. So um, I had a client that went into full remission from Hashimoto's um, and her numbers went from 378 down to 23 by just removing her food sensitivities. Then we seal up the gut because, you know, you can remove the food, but if you put it back in your diet, it's, it's, it's going to be there again, right? Um, but if you seal the gut and you repair the gut, you give your body a fighting chance to actually feel healthy and feel at its optimal vitality. Can we pause there for a moment? So let's say you're healing the gut, uh, and you're letting the gut repair. So, and because you just mentioned, like, if you let that food back in, then it's going to happen again. So then it's basically like, you know, you have to make a choice. Like if you want a healed gut, don't eat that food. Yeah. And some of it, you know, what shows up on the initial food sensitivity lab is usually, um, I test for 176 additives and foods and chemicals that are, you know, including MSG, things that are in our food um, that shouldn't be. But um, a lot of my clients, so I'll say, I'll just talk about myself. So I have celiac disease. Um, my initial lab showed wheat as red, but I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of internal work. So wheat still shows up, but it's yellow. Now that's systemically what it's going to do to my body. That's different than what's going on in my gut, which I also test, you know, we do stool samples and I know that my, my gut does not like wheat, you know, but you can, you can lower those foods down. Once you remove them all, you stop masking the symptoms of the foods that are really bothering you. And then you slowly reintroduce them um, so that you can tell is this actually a trigger or was it just because my, you know, I have leaky gut and everything is kind of a trigger right now. And the, the cool thing about the, the lab that I do is it's live blood. So a lot of, um, a lot of labs are dried blood spots and they're looking for your IgG reaction. Like what is your immune system saying to this food? You have to be eating it. 
to do the work that I do, you don't have to be eating it and it will still show up because they're saying, this is your blood spot and this is say wheat or corn. And they look for a quantitative number of what is, what is your reaction to this? So from zero and on up, you know? Wow. So tell us a little bit about like, what are the most common things that come up, I guess, on this test? Like if we were interested in, in going a step further and exploring how we could get to the bottom of some of these issues. Yeah. So it's, it's funny um, because we're so bio individual, right? So um, my son, he was red for Brussels sprouts. Now you would think Brussels sprouts are healthy, right? That's surprising. Um, yeah. Not for him. Right. So we, we're in this world where we're trying to do the best for our families and for ourselves and, and um, feel great. And sometimes we don't, we're like, I wake up tired every day. I have insomnia. I mean, like, I just don't feel like I felt in my twenties, you know, that's just chronic inflammation, right. And stress. Um, and the stress affects our gut, which I didn't mention earlier, but external stress also affects your gut. So, um, so I don't necessarily have corn. Corn shows up a ton, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and corn is in all your supplements. So I'm looking to make sure that what I give my clients, which is all herbal supplements, I don't work with um, pharmaceuticals, that they're not encased in corn, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, you just you just be surprised. Green beans sometimes are red. It's interesting. It's just, yeah. yeah. So so if yeah. you've done the work, say, and you've given up gluten or whatever, and you're still having these symptoms, that's when maybe you want to take a look deeper with a test. Yeah. To see Absolutely. what could be going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's really helpful. Yeah, because I th I think so many of us it's it's confusing as to what could be really you know bothering you and what what's causing all this. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And a lot of times people, you know, your body does two different things. It either, um, it even, sometimes your body's like, I don't want that. I don't like that food. But sometimes certain things that maybe are feeding um, bacteria that's opportunistic, like, like candida, you know, you're like, oh, I want, I want this dairy. I'm dairy has a ton of sugar in it. I want, you know, cookies, whatever. But sometimes your body craves things that are not beneficial for it, yes. depending on what's going on, you know? Sure. I know I recently gave up dairy and I, it's hard. <laughs> it makes, I have a lot of cravings <laughs> for it. It's not easy. And maybe you're right. Yes. Maybe it's the sugar in the dairy that, that gets you really wanting well, it's more. A, it's, what is it called? Like, a, I think it's called like a Casio morphine. I don't okay. know. It, mm -hmm. Dairy, I don't remember what it's called, but dairy is like a drug for your brain. Like the casein? It, it, like, the casein. Yes, it, yeah. yes, it hits that um, pleasure receptor and it's like, give me more. I and mean, gluten's the mm -hmm. same way. Um, mm -hmm. The way it interacts with your brain, which again, your gut and your brain are connected, right? Right, right. So, yeah, yes. tell us a little more about that because I, I always hear the gut brain connection, but I'm not always sure exactly what that means for me. Sure. So, I mean, I'll, I'll even talk about the things that we call neurotransmitters like serotonin, which is your happy, uh, your happy feelings, right? That's 90% of that is made in your gut. It's not made in your brain, mm -hmm. you know? So even if you're having mood symptoms that are off, the reason why we can take um, SSRI, like a and antidepressant in our mouth and it affects our brain is because our gut's digesting it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, some people are even saying the gut is the first brain now, and this is our second brain, you know, because our gut really does affect our moods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how does the vagus nerve work? Can you talk a little bit about that? Like with the gut brain connection? Sure. So that um, the vagus nerve starts in our brain stem and it wraps around every major organ in our body. So, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So including our gut, right? So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have never even heard of the vagus nerve. I, I wish I could show you a diagram, but I mean, it's, it's, you see it kind of, it wraps around everything. So it affects everything and it's our kind of our nervous system of our organs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if that, I, I would assume that if that vagus 
nerve is nerved up, it's going to be like affecting all the organs in our body. Yeah. Like it would yeah. create a lot of tension. Is is that somehow connected to like, you know, when we're feeling stressed? Sure. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, so I'm just trying to think, you know, that there's um, a, a mom out there or a listener out there, or I can even use myself, for example, like when you, when you mentioned before, if you wake up tired and you haven't, so I was just telling Kristen, I'm like, I have a couple of different stresses going on. Like my son's, you know, just finished his post-grad. He's going into, co you know, college and all of these things. And I'm like, so, you know, I, I wonder, I'm like, yeah, stress could be the reason why I wake up. I, I wake up in the middle of the night several times. And then when it's time for me to wake up, I want to sleep. I'm like, okay, this is not okay. I, it helps me when I get up and I just meditate and mm -hmm. kind of now I'm awake. I, I make a conscious decision to have the day I want, what I can control. And that helps, you know, but it does make me wonder. I'm like, wow, I wonder, is this like stress? Is this like some of the things that you're talking about? Like with my, my gut health, is it, is it that I have inflammation? Is it that I'm tired or I feel tired for other reasons? So what would you suggest for a woman like me? Like if I came to you and and set this to you. Yeah. Well, um, I like, I like to do lab work. <laughs> um, right. so really for you, I would say, let's check your stress levels. Let's see how your body's metabolizing stress. And we would do it in an insomnia panel so I could see what was going on at night. But I'm also going to look at your gut because parasites get active at night and they sometimes okay. wake us up. Um, uh -huh. blood sugar, low blood sugar is sometimes what wakes us up. Now, if you're, if you're stressed and you're kind of ruminating on those thoughts of things that are coming up, um, meditation is, is the best thing you can do, but what's right. waking you up, right? That's right, what I right. want to figure out. Well, yeah. that was, that was great, you know, because that really gives a great example of how, you know, obviously I, I common sense tells me, yeah, I have stress, but those labs can also tell me, Hey, you have parasites going on. That's what's, that, this is an accumulative it's, it's a combination of things. And that's really, uh, that's really hopeful. Thank you so much for um, explaining that to me, Kim. So we are going to just be mindful of our time and, and maybe wrap it up a little bit here. And, um, you know, maybe that's one of the takeaways, but I would like to ask you, Kim, uh, what are two things that our listeners can, you know, think about doing today to um, uh, improve our gut health. Okay, so um, I kind of like to take it from the top, which is stress, you know, yeah. stress is what affects mm -hmm. our bodies um, and our gut. And so something that moms can do and kids can do even at their school desk, which doesn't, um, wouldn't be too distracting, right? It's just, you just put your hand up to your neck and you kind of shape your finger like this and you rub down on your vagus nerve. Where is, the vag you where, where is the vagus nerve? Is We're it? just going to rub on our neck. Okay. So like I said, it comes from your brainstem and wraps around. We're just going to rub on our neck just a few times. Um, you can even, you know, you could even do it at your office. If you it are feels relaxing. Mom. Yeah, it, it does. does. It calms you down mm -hmm. and, and it's going to get you out of that, you know, fight or flight or freeze kind of stress response. If you're mm -hmm. having a tough time, you know, you don't have to react. You can just give yourself some deep breaths, which is also very um, relaxing yeah. and relieves stress. Mm -hmm. Your brain doesn't realize you're stressed if you're taking long, deep breaths. Because when you're stressed, you take short breaths, right? So yes. you can kind of trick yep. your brain by breathing in deep and then breathing out and rubbing your neck. That's um, nice. And then, yeah, and then, you know, we didn't talk about this, but our mouth is the only thing that connects us to our inside world, right? I mean, our nose breathes in air, but our mouth is the only thing that can tell our gut, you know, give our gut messages. So I would recommend that you cut out wheat. Try it for a month and see if ADHD doesn't improve. 
see if headaches don't go away. If you're, you know, I, because our wheat in America is very inflammatory. We allow a lot of pesticides on crops. It's genetically modified. Our bodies don't necessarily understand the message because mm. it's been recreated, right? Um, it's not a natural food at this point. So um, yeah, that's the other thing. So calm yourself, deep breaths. I mean, honestly, you could do it like this. That's, like that's this, a super this. easy one. Yeah, to yeah. do it all the yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I can incorporate that one. I like right. that. And then, and then like uh, going gluten free uh, for two weeks and seeing like good. what type of, uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, well, those are definitely easy to do. Not, not too complicated. Good place to start. So we appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, Kim is offering our listeners the opportunity to have the food sensitivity lab test along with a one-on-one -on -one consultation for a reduced rate. Right in FMCM, that stands for Functional Medicine Coaching Moms, as your referral. You can see Kim's calendar at www.luxhealthstyle.com. That's www.luxhealthstyle.com. Connect with Kim on Instagram and Facebook. Her handle is Lux Health Style. Thank, Thank you, you so lady. much, Kim. The information provided in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended for the purpose of diagnosing, curing, treating, or preventing any disease. We are functional medicine certified health coaches and not licensed medical professionals. The opinions and advice of guests are their own and also not considered to be medical advice. Always consult with a healthcare professional when making any healthy lifestyle changes. We would love to hear from our mom community. Any wellness topics that are high on your list, please DM us at Functional Medicine Coaching Moms. We can also be reached via email at info at functionalmedicinecoachingmoms.com. You can find Functional Medicine Coaching Moms podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button.